I first started studying the online white nationalist movement in the website stormfront.org in 2004, they had 30,000 members. Today they have over 300,000 members. And they average around 30,000 people visiting the site every single day across the world. Uh, the main focus of the site is teaching white people that whites are superior, there's a race war underway, white people are the targets globally, and white people need to wake up. When I first heard about the shooting, uh, that a purportedly white man had gone into the center of the AME church and killed nine black people, I knew that it was uh, tied to our history of racial violence. But when it came out within the first, I think, day that the purported shooter said, you are raping our women and taking over the country, I had to do this. I knew exactly where he'd been spending time. Uh, this is before the manifesto came out or where he actually mentions um, that he was, claims to be a white nationalist, but he very succinctly summarized the ideology of white nationalism in that statement. And I, I would have been very surprised if he hadn't have learned, learned that ideology online. So most people are not going to be wearing swastikas because that's going to, unless they really want to be ostracized. But people can wear the number 88, which in white nationalist uh, ideology represents uh, H is the eighth letter of the alphabet, so 88 is a shorthand for Heil Hitler. So in some ways, 88 and the swastika can represent the, sim the same thing. Um, but for those of us who aren't indoctrinated into this ideology and don't understand that, we might just see it as some innocuous number. Um, the number 14 is also important in white nationalism. It stands for the kind of summary of the ideology of the movement that we must secure the existence of our people and a future for white children. So for Dylan Roof, there are some pictures of him writing 1488 in the sand on a beach, uh, clearly kind of demonstrating symbolically uh, his allegiance to white nationalism. We know that with further deinstitutionalizing a white supremacist culture, with taking the Confederate flag out of public spaces, that's going to provoke feelings of um, insecurity, nervousness, fear um, by the primarily disaffected white men who participate in these websites. So there's a chance that it could incite actually more violence, more people deciding they need to take uh, the race war into their own hands. Don Black founded Stormfront in the mid-90s. He is a former uh, Grand Dragon of the KKK. Uh, kind of, you, you, when, he was, when he was a youth, he was friends with David Duke, um, the neo-Nazi. Neo and that they've maintained a, a friendship. But today, uh, Black doesn't, doesn't show up in, in photos on the website wearing the KKK hood. He ends up showing himself wearing a business suit and tie. So representing, saying he's not an outcast, he's not an outlier, uh, his ideology is now mainstream. The scary thing is that someone can uh, be exposed to this kind of thinking and then can spend as much time as they want online uh, becoming entrenched in it and also finding a community online. A lot of these websites, you know, they have like Stormfront, they have a subset for parenting. They have a subset of the website for youth, where you can play games and, you know, or with homemaking, where you can share recipes, or dating, where you can find other white people to date. So, but there's, there's a way that they share the ideology, but also create community online. So if someone is feeling disaffected, if they're feeling alienated, they can find this website and have, if they're a white person, um, encounter the ideology, decide, oh, I actually should feel good because I'm a white person, and then actually find a community online.